Welcome to Open Temple's virtual yoga studio. My name is Zach Lasker. Um, I have the honor of wearing two hats. I'm both the executive director of the organization and our resident yoga instructor. Shabbat Shalom, good Sabbath and welcome. Please unfold your mat or your towel, whatever it is that you're practicing on today. And in terms of props, I wanna suggest that you have access to two blocks or thick hardcover books. Those will serve you well. If not, don't worry. And then also I have a folding chair right here, really any kind of chair. Please put it on your mat with the back of the chair facing towards the front of the room and the seat of the chair facing towards the back. And please just to start, take a deep inhale through your nose, lengthen up through your torso, and let it out through your mouth. Do that another two times. Inhale through your nose. Exhale out your mouth. Another inhale through your nose. And this time stick your tongue out and exhale. Welcome. And I wanna start with uh, a blessing of gratitude. Thank you for taking time out of your day to honor yourself and to create space for your practice. Um, over these couple of weeks, actually several weeks in this yoga studio, we are looking at a strand of Judaism called Musar. Musar is a, a set of measures that lead to an ethical life. And there are a series of attributes. And the idea is that the more we fine tune each attribute, the more we optimize the likelihood that we can act and function in this world as decent human beings, or perhaps even as mensches. We started a couple of weeks ago with the attribute of humility. Last week, we worked on patience. And this week, we have arrived at Hakarat Hatov, recognition of the good, or more simply stated, gratitude. We're gonna start in a restorative pose with your folding chair. You're gonna put your shins up on the seat of the chair and lay down on your back. And you can either put your feet through the backrest, that's what I'm gonna do or you can have your feet just fully on the seat. Put one hand on your belly, one hand on your chest. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. And continue that slow and steady cycle of breath. And right away, I want us to focus on a prayer that is traditionally recited first thing in the morning. I know we're scattered across different time zones. For some of us, it's still the morning, others were in the afternoon. But traditionally in the Jewish faith, one of the first prayers that we recite as we're rising out of bed is moda ani. And in Hebrew, it states moda ani lefanacha Melachai Vikayam Shehechazarta Binishmati. And essentially translated, I give thanks for the restoration of my soul and for the faith that surrounds me. As you turn your attention to the rise and fall of your chest with each inhale and exhale, 
I want to invite you to offer gratitude for the simple restoration of your soul. You made it another day. You woke up today. Already experiencing the sensation in your body as your chest rises and falls. The Hebrew word for the Jewish people is Yehudim. And the root of that word, Hoda, is thanks, is gratitude. So we have this opportunity to get up each day and give thanks. Let's add some movement with our arms. Inhale, reach your arms up towards the ceiling, palms face in towards each other. And as you exhale, let your arms descend towards the back of the room. They might come part way down or all the way down. And then inhale, arms up towards the ceiling. Just taking in this range of motion and exhale, arms lower back towards the ground. So you start to waken up the joint in your shoulders. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, arms descend down. And inhale, arms up. And those who want to increase the intensity of this stretch, interlace your fingers, flip your palms up towards the ceiling, Straighten your arms, take the bend out of your elbows. And then with your next exhale, let your arms descend towards the back of the room. Feel the difference in this stretch. And expand through all four sides of your torso towards the back of the room. One more inhale and exhale. Release the interlace of your fingers. Inhale, arms up. And this time, exhale, let your arms descend back towards the ground alongside your torso so that your fingers point towards the front of the room. I just want to offer one more time. This gratitude for the restoration of our soul, the ability to be present right here and right now. Remove your shins from your chair and roll on up and take your chair and just put it all the way towards the front of the room. Not going to need it for a while and come to sit in Sukhasana with your right shin in front of your left shin. Sukha is ease. So this is an easeful seated position. You might want to take one of your blocks or books and prop yourself up on it to relieve any tension in your lower back. And take your arms out towards the side. Inhale, arms up, palms face in towards each other. And exhale, arms come down. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, arms come down. Just celebrating this range of motion. As you inhale, your arms come up again. This time as you exhale, lower your right arm towards the ground, come up onto your right fingertips, and then walk your fingertips over towards the right, flatten your right palm, and rotate your left arm over to the right. 
Turn your gaze up to the left, rooting down through your sitting bones and inhale, lengthen through the left side of your torso towards the right side of the room and exhale. Inhale, feel the length from your left hip to your left shoulder and your left shoulder shooting out of your left hand. One more inhale. And exhale. And now inhale, pushing off of your right hand, right arm comes up and exhale, both arms come down. Switch the crossing of your shins so that your left shin is in front of your right shin. And let's do it again. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, arms down. I'm going to do that two more times. Today, we're going to be working on the length of our side body. And among the benefits, when we lengthen the muscles of the side body, we create space between our ribs. We work our back. And as we lengthen our torso and elongate the space between our ribs, we increase our mobility and ultimately create more space for breath. And breath is the thread that ties us movement to movement on the mat, off the mat, and through life. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, lower your left hand down. Come onto your left fingertips. Walk those left fingertips like a spider towards the left side of the room. Flatten your left palm. Swing your right arm over to the left. Turn your gaze up to the right. And inhale. And exhale. Inhale through your nose. Exhale out your mouth. So continue that cycle of breath, lengthening, really taking advantage of this opportunity to lengthen the right side of your body. So many of the poses we're going to do today are going to emphasize this motion. And then push off with your left hand, raise your left arm up, and exhale, both arms come down. Switch the crossing of your shin again. Put both hands in front of you on your fingertips. Apologies to those with arachnophobia. Imagine that your hands are like spiders and just walk them forward in front of you. And then flatten your palms. And again, right away, notice the length. You're going to hear me say this over and over again, the length of your torso. And then you start to lower down. And this range of motion is going to be different for each of us. Some of us are going to come just a third of the way down or halfway down. Others are going to come all the way down, flattening their forearms on the ground, lowering their forehead towards the ground. Wherever you are in this pose, here you are. And going back to the liturgy that starts the Jewish day, the next common prayer that we recite exclaims, Matovu Ohalecha Yaakov, Mishkanotecha Yisrael. Matovu, how good. Ohalecha Yaakov are your tents, O Jacob. Mishkanatecha Yisrael, your encampments, O Israel. Again, this exclamation of gratitude. And these days when I recite that prayer, how good are your tents and your encampments? When I'm in my yoga practice, I'm thinking about my body and the abilities of my body. Of course, there are hundreds of limitations, but I use my practice as an opportunity to celebrate the abilities. So 
walk your hands back in towards your shins and switch the crossing of your shins. We're gonna do this forward fold one more time, just balancing out. It also functions as a hip opener. So walk your hands forward, coming down according to your unique ability and body and where you are today and in this moment. And I wanna come back to this blessing of Matovu, this exclamation, how good are your tents and your encampments? I've shared this before. What's so interesting about it is that this blessing came out of the mouth of a man named Bilam who was from an enemy camp of the Israelites when they were wandering in the desert. And he was sent up onto a mountain to look out over the Israelites and deliver a curse. And he looked out and he opened up his mouth and out came this blessing instead of the curse. this powerful lesson that when we stand up and open our eyes and open up our mouths, we can go in any direction. And even when we're coming from a space of negativity, we can choose to see the good and to offer that gratitude. So as you're in this forward fold, Instead of thinking, oh my gosh, I can only come halfway down. Maybe it's, wow, I'm halfway down. Walk your hands back in towards your shins. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. And using today as your playing ground, just make an observation, an offering of gratitude for something already today that has occurred. And really press your palms in. And release your hands. Let's come into our tabletop position. Hands rooted into the mat, shoulder width apart, index fingers pointing up towards the top of the mat. Space out your fingers, shoulder stack directly above your wrists. Knees are hip width apart, your back is in a neutral position and let's flow through just a couple cat cows to open up our spine. Inhale, reach your heart and chest forward, lift your tush up, arch your back. Exhale, round your back, draw your belly into your chest. Inhale, heart and chest forward. Exhale, round your back. Inhale, chest and heart forward and up. And exhale, round your back. Do that just a couple more times. And now come up, on, up onto your knees. And if your knees are sensitive, I wanna invite you to slip a pillow underneath or a towel or fold your blanket in half. With your hands on your hips, I'm gonna to turn to face the camera. Step your left foot, excuse me, right foot, 90 degrees over towards the right. The heel of your right foot should be aligned with your left knee. And then start to straighten your right leg, come onto your right heel. And with your hands on your hips, your hips are gonna veer over to the right, recenter them. Inhale, lift your arms up, coming into gate pose. Exhale, lower your right hand, drape it down over your right leg. And before you start to lean to the right, inhale again, lengthen through the left side of your torso to reach your left arm up and then swing your left hand over to the right, walk your right hand down your leg, turn your gaze up to the left, and inhale, 
and exhale. Here we are again, lengthening that side body, creating that space between your ribs. And then inhale, lift your right arm up. Both hands come down onto your hips, bend your right knee and lower your right knee back down parallel to your left knee. Second side, step your left foot out 90 degrees towards the left side of the room, heel aligned with your knee, hands on your hips, your hips are gonna veer over to the left, center them, then straighten your left leg, come onto your left heel, inhale, arms up, exhale, start to lower your left arm over your left leg. Before you lean over to the left, inhale, lift up, through the right side of your torso. And then start to lean over to the left side of the room. You can walk your hand down your left leg. Start to turn your gaze up to the right. Inhaling and exhaling. Making observations. and trying to focus those observations on the positive. You might notice your ability to breathe in a mindful manner. You might notice your ability to create this length. And then inhale, Left arm up, hands come down onto your hips, bend your left knee and lower it back down parallel to the right. Come back into tabletop position. And I wanna encourage you, if you have sensitive wrists, and I'm gonna model this right now, you can put your hands up on your blocks or your books. That's gonna relieve some of the pressure out of your wrists. Tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back, come into Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Few cycles of breath and rotate the inner part of your thighs towards the back of the room. And then turn your gaze forward. Inhale, draw your right knee into your chest. Start to shift your torso forward and then step your right foot between your hands. Lower onto your left knee, untuck your left toes. Inhale, lift your torso and arms up. And as you exhale, bend deeper into your right knee. Again, if you have sensitive knees, there should be something underneath your left knee. And again, inhale, growing longer through both sides of your torso, straightening your arms. And as you exhale, lower your right arm down along your side. Inhale, this time reach up just through your left side of your torso, which lifts your left arm up. You might see where I'm going. Start to rotate that left hand over to the right. This is what allows you to lengthen the left side of your body couple cycles of breath. And it's just a really subtle stretch. One more inhale. And exhale. And now inhale, lift your right arm up. Exhale, lower your hands onto the ground or your blocks. Tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up. Step your right leg back, you're in a plank position. And then exhale into downward facing dog. You can always take a vinyasa if you know what that means. If you're a more advanced practitioner. And now inhale, draw your left knee into your chest. Step your left foot forward, lower onto your right knee, second side, untuck your right toes. Inhale, both arms come up. And exhale, bend deeper into your left knee. 
Inhale, lengthen through both sides of your torso. And as you exhale, lower your left arm down by your side. Inhale, stretching up through the right side of your torso, which lifts your right arm, and then start to subtly swing your right arm over to the left. Hips are centered. So for some of us, we need to consciously draw our right hip forward. Couple more cycles of breath. And now inhale, left arm comes up, center off. Exhale, both hands come down. Tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up and step to the front of the mat. Find yourself in Uttanasana, in a forward fold. Inhale, come halfway up, flatten your back. Exhale, folding forward. Root into your feet, inhale, rise up. And exhale, arms come down. Pausing for a moment, step your feet together. And take a moment for gratitude. Let your mind identify something that you've already accomplished in this first part of our practice. And now put your hands on your hips and I want you to cross your right foot over your left foot. Your pinky toes should be touching. So for some of us, this is gonna be a play on balance, but really root down through both sides of your feet and then exhale, start to fold forward. You can have a bend in your knees, fingertips on the ground if they don't reach, take one of your blocks. And then start to walk your fingers over towards the right. This is gonna help you to stretch the IT band in your left leg. Couple cycles of breath. Come back towards the center, keeping your legs crossed, hands on your hips, inhale, lift your torso up. It's time for our next side body stretch. Inhale, arms up. And take your right hand, grab onto your left wrist and start to pull your left wrist over to the right. Noticing the length of the left side of your torso. And then both arms up, palms face each other, arms come down, hands on your hips, and step your right foot back over to the right. Second side, cross your left foot outside of your right foot, pinky toes touch, inhale, lift up through your torso, and then as you exhale, start to fold forward, hands on the floor or on a block, whichever helps you connect with the ground, and then start to walk your fingertips over to the left. Say hello to the IT band in your right leg. Couple cycles of breath. Walk your hands back to the center. Hands come back on your hips, lift your torso up, take a beat to steady yourself, and then inhale, arms up. Take your left hand, grab onto your right wrist, pull your right wrist over to the left. And feeling that stretch, 
from your right hip to your right shoulder, from your right shoulder, shooting out that right arm. And then inhale to straighten up and exhale, arms come down. Step your feet together. And let's continue. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms down. So we're gonna to start to move forward, flowing through some poses. And I wanna remind you, if you have sensitive wrists or if you're feeling like the poses are too intense, have your hands on blocks as we step back into plank. And we're gonna to start to do some side plank poses and your hands can be on the blocks. So inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward, bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your right foot back. Step your left foot to meet it, you're in plank position. And from plank position, drop your right knee on the ground, untuck your right toes, lower your left heel towards the ground, and then rooting your right hand into the ground, lift your left arm up, come into a modified side plank pose. And if you're an experienced practitioner, feel free to take Vashistasana in its more traditional form with both legs straight and your feet stacked one on top of the other. And now from this version of side plank pose, take your top arm, rotate it towards the front of the room. And here's where we turn it into a side body stretch. Be here for just a couple more cycles of breath. And then inhale, top arm up. Exhale, lower your top hand down. Lift your left heel up. Tuck your right toes and lift your right knee up and step back into plank position. Second side, this time lower your left knee to the ground, rotate your right heel down. Your left toes are untucked. Push down into your right hand and rotate your right arm up towards the ceiling. Side plank pose. Have your bottom hand on a block if your wrist is sensitive. And then once you feel some stability, inhale, start to rotate your top arm towards the front of the room. Lengthen through your side body. Couple cycles of breath. And then inhale, top arm up. Exhale, top hand comes down. Lift your right heel up, come onto your right toes. Tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up. Step your left foot back into plank position. Shift your hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. And then turn your gaze between your hands. Start to walk your feet up towards your wrists. Come into Uttanasana, forward fold. You can have a slight bend in your knees if you'd like. And then inhale, come halfway up, flatten your back, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, folding forward into Uttanasana. And then inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms down. Excellent job. Going to move forward in a moment, but I want to share a quick story from the Talmud from a rabbi named Ben Zoma. Ben Zoma describes a meal, a feast 
in the privacy of one owns home. You remember the time when we used to have guests over. One day it will come again. And this family invites two guests. They sit down, they have their meal. And at the end of the meal, the first guest says, what a meal. The effort that my host exerted on my behalf. I had meat, I had bread, I had wine. All this for me as a guest. That's guest number one. The second guest, what does that person say? This meal. What did, they, what did the host do? I had one piece of meat. I had one roll. I had one cup of wine. All this effort the host did for their own family. And how two people can approach the same situation, one from a perspective of gratitude and the other from a point of discontent is such a powerful lesson. We don't have the power always to change our circumstances, but we do have the ability to make a choice as to how we approach them. So side plank is difficult. We're gonna do another version of it. And the heat, the challenge that I present to you is that of gratitude, of noticing your ability instead of your shortcomings. So starting in Tadasana, inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up, flatten your back. Exhale, folding forward, bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your right leg back. Step your left leg to meet it. You're in a plank position. And now lower down onto your knees for a moment. Come onto your forearms. And you can pad them with a pillow or a blanket if they're sensitive. And then step your right leg back. Step your left leg back and find yourself in a forearm plank. Engage your core. Means tighten your stomach muscles. Keep your gaze a couple of inches in front of you. And then start to angle your right arm in about 45 degrees. Roll on to the outer part of your right foot. Stack your left foot on top. And then inhale, lift your top arm up. And you can modify this even more by lifting up your top foot and planting it on the ground. That will give you a little bit of extra support. Couple more cycles of breath. So again, this is tough, but what are you noticing that you have the ability to do? And then lower your top forearm back down, straighten out your right forearm, come back into a forearm plank and second side, rotate your right forearm in about 45 degrees, roll on to your outer Left foot, stack your right foot on top of your left foot. Start with your hand on your top hip and then reach up through your top arm and use your top leg and foot as a kickstand in front of you if you need the extra support. And maybe you're down on your hip. Maybe this isn't working for you. Perhaps your gratitude is that of I'm here and I'm breathing and I'm learning and I'm growing, even if I'm not doing this kathamini pose. One more inhale, exhale, lower your top arm down, come back onto your forearm, you're back in that forearm plank. And already you can have your knees down. And now everybody bend your knees lower them down, bring your big toes to touch, start to walk your hands back, nestle your torso between your thighs, 
and come into child's pose. Take a couple cycles of breath. And so that side plank, that side plank was just you sitting down for the feast. What are you noticing? And what do you notice about your observations and the path that you're choosing? Start to walk your hands forward, straighten your arms, pass through a tabletop position, tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back, downward facing dog, we're not going to hold it. Immediately turn your gaze between your palms and step or hop forward till you find yourself in a forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up, flatten your back. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down. So I'm emphasizing this challenge of finding gratitude in the darkness because that's the true test. And in his wonderful book, Everyday Holiness on the Path of Musar, writer, Alan, writer and scholar, Alan Marinus acknowledges that tapping into your gratitude during times of joy and abundance is vitally important. But to have that ability when the tides have turned, when you're in a shadow, ultimately creates joy and kind of creates that space between your ribs, helps you to lengthen, it helps you to find your breath. It's why we're working on our side bodies today. So next, in Tadasana, inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your right foot back. Step your left foot. You can take the vinyasa if you'd like. Otherwise, go back into downward facing dog. Turn your gaze between your palms. Inhale, step your left right foot between your palms and heel toe your right foot to the center of the mat, lower onto your back heel, and you want the heel of your front foot aligned with the, with the arch of your back foot. And then inhale, windmill your arms up, passing briefly through Virabhadrasana two, straighten that front leg, and Heel toe your back foot in a few inches, angle your back foot in 45 degrees, and we're gonna come into triangle pose. And today you can use your block, but you don't need to. I'll put my block there and have it ready. Inhale, reach your front arm forward. Hip goes to the back of the room. Lower your right hand down onto your ankle, your shin, the floor, a block, and twist open. Triangle pose. And right away, we're gonna turn this into a side body stretch. So inhale, take your top arm, rotate it towards the front of the room. Your palm is facing towards the back. and rotate your bottom ribs up. Root into your back foot and feel yourself growing longer from your back foot to your hips, from your hips shooting out of your top arm towards the front of the room. And now those of you that wanna deepen the stretch, inhale, start to lift your bottom arm up. Your arms are parallel. Straighten your arms, couple more cycles of breath. 
Inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale. And then everybody lift your arms up, arms into a T position, and then back arm comes down, windmill your hands down, frame your front foot, lift your back heel up, and then step your right leg back into plank position and exhale, downward facing dog. Second side, inhale, turn your gaze between your palms. Exhale, step your left foot forward, heel toe your left foot so that it's in the center of the mat. Drop your back heel towards the ground. You want the heel of your front foot aligned with the arch of your back foot. And then inhale, windmill your arms up, briefly into warrior two. Straighten out your front leg. You might wanna heel toe your back foot in a couple of inches. Rotate your back foot in 45 degrees. And then inhale, reach your front arm forward. Hips go towards the back of the room, lowering your front hand onto your shin your ankle, a block, the floor, and then rotate your chest open. Your right arm floats up, triangle pose, and then inhale right away into that side body stretch. Rotate your top arm towards the front of the room, palm faces in. And same action, root into your back foot. That's your anchor. Trace the sensation through your back leg to your top hip and from your hip to your shoulder and your shoulder shooting out through your top hand. And those of you that want to deepen the intensity, start to lift your, top, your bottom arm up, parallel your arms towards the front of the room. Two more cycles of breath. Inhale, lift your chest up and arms up. Arms come back into a T position and then windmill your hands down, frame your front foot. Lift your back heel up, step your left leg back to meet your right leg, you're in plank position. Shift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Turn your gaze between your palms and step or hop forward into Uttanasana, forward fold. Root into your feet, inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down, Tadasana. And which meal were you just at? Slowing down your breath. And it's time for our peak pose, the pose we've been building up. So as we've lengthened through both sides of our torsos, torso and really stretched the side body and created the space between the ribs. And also when we were working on our side plank and in forearm, we were engaging our core. We now have the ability to optimize our utkatasana, our chair pose. And utkatasana is a Sanskrit word that actually doesn't mean chair. It's just the look of the pose. It looks like we're sitting in a chair. The translation of Utkatasana is fierce pose. So yes, in a practice devoted to gratitude, especially in our darkest moments, we are going to come into chair pose. But let me say right away, for those of you that have sensitive knees or you're feeling the intensity of the practice really coming to you, you can use the chair for chair pose. It's totally cool. You're here, you made it, you did it. You have nothing to prove. So I'm gonna keep this right here to show you how you might use it. 
But before you sit down in your chair, if you have a block or a book, I want you to just take a moment to practice bending your knees. You're gonna put your block between your thighs. We're gonna first do Utkatasana two ways with the blocks and then we'll use it without, we'll do it without the props. So grip the block means turn your thighs on, your inner thighs, and start to rotate your thighs towards the back of the room. And the benefit of the block is that you have something to press into. It keeps you honest. It makes sure that you're really turning your inner thighs in and back. And then without, keep your arms alongside your torso, nothing fancy with your arms. Inhale, start to bend your knees, pushing that block down and exhale up. And if you see right away that this isn't for you, no problem. You can take a seat in the chair, inhale, bend your knees, sit your tush back and exhale, stand up. One more time, inhale, bend your knees, sit your tush back as if you're sitting in a chair and then exhale, push into your feet and stand up. And now take that block, put it between your arms and forget about bending your knees, just inhale, lift your arms up and come up about three quarters of the way. You don't need to come up all the way and press your palms into the side of your block or book and start to reach your arms forward and exhale, lower them down. Inhale, arms up, exhale, lower them down. Again, inhale, arms up, and exhale, arms down. So Utkatasana is the combination of those two movements that we just did. If your knees are sensitive, you're gonna sit down in your chair, and this is what you're gonna be practicing. Lean your torso a little bit forward, and you now have more space between your ribs because of all the side body stretching that we just did. And you can do that. That's the modification. Everyone else who is coming into the traditional form of Utkatasana. And if you have two blocks, you can have one between your thighs and one between your hands. We're gonna combine the two actions. So inhale, start to bend into your knees. Sit your hips back, start to lift your arms up, lengthen through all four sides of your torso, and Utkatasana, chair pose, fierce pose. Another inhale, and exhale, root into your feet, and rise up. Arms come down. Remove the blocks keeping yourself honest. Step your feet together this time without the block between your thighs, but imagine right away that you are pressing your thighs into that block. It's an imaginary block. And inhale, Utkatasana, shifting your hips back, arms up and frame your front ears. Soften your tongue. Smile, it's fierce, but you're doing it. And then root into your feet and lower your arms down. Excellent job. We're gonna start to cool down and come down back onto the ground. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees, start to squat down, and then lower onto your tush. Extend your legs forward. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, folding forward into Paschimottanasana, a seated forward fold. If you have a strap, you can loop the strap over your feet. Otherwise, put your hands on your shins, 
your ankles or your feet. Lengthen through your torso and then start to bend your elbows out to the side and bring your torso towards your thighs. We're going to be down here several cycles of breath. and start to lift your gaze up, release your hands, lengthen up through your torso, and pause for a moment. We're gonna do it again. And for me, as I do a pose like this, and I think about gratitude and finding gratitude in the darkness, my mind goes towards my amazing, about to turn 97 year old grandmother and her incredible zest for life. She is unquestionably the guest at the table who takes it in and constantly finds joy and reasons for praise. As she gets older, I know something about the chemicals and levels in your body, the filter is down a little bit, but she is a forever optimist. Inhale, arms up. Let's do it one more time. Exhale, folding forward. So which version of the guest were you the first time we did this pose? And if your mind was stuck on your limitations, your deficits, step into the shoes of that dinner guest and search hard for reasons to be grateful. Release your hands, bend your knees, plant your feet on the ground. Have one of your blocks close to your side if you have them. Extend your arms out, and start to lower down onto your back. Walk your feet in, arms alongside your torso. Your heels should touch your fingertips. And we're gonna come into a bridge pose. And there's two versions that you can choose between. One is a restorative version and one is a traditional version. If you know how to come into bridge, feel free to do so right away. First, I'm gonna show you the restorative version and then I'll show you the traditional one. So with your block right near your hand, you're gonna press into your feet, lift your hips up, Roll your shoulders underneath you. So tuck your upper arms, excuse me, underneath your shoulders and then grab onto that block. Place the block directly underneath your hips. And then interlace your fingers together and you're in a restorative version of bridge. This is a great back bend and chest opener. And the traditional version is to just do it without the blocks. We're gonna be here for five cycles of breath. And if you're doing it without the block, push your knees forward. And just like when we were in Utkatasana, rotate your inner thighs down towards the ground, root into your feet. Lift your hips up just a little bit more. One more cycle of breath. And then if you're on the block, remove the block and everyone lower your hips down. Draw your knees into your chest. Just rock from right to left and left to right. 
Come into happy baby, lift your shins up into the air, bring your arms inside your legs and then grab onto your outer feet. And again, just shift from right to left and left to right. And then pause. And you have a couple of options for Shavasana. Option one is to take your chair and start with the end with this pose we started with, with your shins up on the chair, lying down on your back, arms alongside your torso, or you can take a traditional Shavasana. And as a special treat during Shavasana, we did this a couple months ago. It's my pleasure to introduce uh, a co-creator at Open, excuse me, a, a, a face in the Open Temple community, Boaz Morad. Boaz, uh, if you want to unmute yourself. Hi. Hi. Uh, a little bit of feedback. There we go. Okay. I think that might be better. Yes. So among Boaz's many talents and areas of expertise is the gift of music. And he has joined us today to share some of his music as we settle into our Shavasana. So Boaz, I turn it over to you. Can you hear that? Excellent. Beautiful. 
Take several more cycles of breath, settling into your body. Moment of silence. Whatever position you're in, start to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes, bringing life back into your body. It's the second pass at Moda Ani, Lefanecha, Melechai Vekayam, Shehecha Zarta for returning Binishmati, my soul. And come into a sitting position. Hands on top of your knees with your palms facing up and let your eyes close for another moment. And for those of you who get my, my email each week, want to come back to the words that I referenced, these amazing and beautiful words from Youth Poet Laureate Amanda Gorman, who spoke to the people of the United States a few days ago. I'm just lifting a few of her brilliant words. When day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. And so we lift our gazes, not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first, we must first put our differences aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. So in these dark moments and in moments of quarantine, where those of us who live with others are piled one on top of the other. And in all likelihood, we experience points of frustration and tension. Can we make the choice to lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms? Press your palms together in the center of your chest. And I invite you to think of someone in your life for whom you are grateful and where that gratitude is kept silent. Can you make a commitment to yourself right here and right now to be the dinner guest who opens their mouth with gratitude? And can you reach out? Can you extend your arms to that person in your life this week? Inhale through your nose. Exhale out your mouth. Lower your chin to your chest. Open your eyes. Shabbat Shalom. Namaste. Thank you so much. And in the spirit of gratitude, the power of music is just incredibly, incredibly large, voluminous. And to have talent in our community from someone like Boaz is a gift, his willingness to share. That is certainly where my gratitude is going. So thank you so much to Boaz.